The film opens with a scene that sets the tone for John Wick's arduous journey toward redemption. Seeking refuge from the dangers that loom over him, John finds solace in the company of his loyal pit bull, a symbol of unwavering companionship in a world filled with treachery. However, John's inner turmoil and frustrations bubble to the surface, driving him to unleash his emotions on a wooden board. Each powerful blow he delivers becomes a physical manifestation of his pent-up anguish, leaving his knuckles raw and bleeding. In this vulnerable state, the mysterious and enigmatic The Elder enters the picture. Drawn by the sound of John's relentless assault, he stands witness to the intensity of John's struggle. With a quiet yet commanding presence, the Bowery King engages John in a pivotal conversation, probing the depths of his readiness to take on the seemingly insurmountable might of the high table. John's response, a simple yet resolute, yeah, reverberates through the air, carrying with it a fierce determination that defies the odds stacked against him. In his quest for justice, John Wick travels to the captivating land of Morocco. Riding on horseback, he chases after men who serve the mysterious elder. The hot desert sun beats down as John races against them, his determination pushing him forward. Amidst the vast desert, the thundering of hooves fills the air as John and his adversaries engage in an intense pursuit. He skillfully eliminates his enemies one by one, their bodies falling to the sandy ground. With each victory, he moves closer to his ultimate goal. Finally, John confronts the Elder, demanding a precious ring that symbolizes power and control. But the Elder reveals that his reign has come to an end, leaving John undeterred. Ignoring the warning, he takes matters into his own hands, ending the Elder's life. In the aftermath of a tumultuous series of events, Winston and Sharon find themselves summoned by the Harbinger, bearing news that will shake their world. The enigmatic Marquis de Gramont, an emissary from the powerful High Table, awaits their arrival. An air of tension hangs heavy as Winston and Sharon step into the presence of the Marquis. It becomes apparent that the Elder, a figure of significant influence, has met an untimely demise. The revelation leaves them unsettled, as the balance of power shifts in unforeseen ways. However, their fears are quickly compounded by the Marquis' scathing condemnation of Winston. He berates him, holding him responsible for failing to eliminate the formidable John Wick. The weight of disappointment settles on Winston's shoulders, fueling a deep sense of regret. Tragedy strikes with a merciless blow as the Marquis, consumed by fury, condemns and obliterates the revered New York Continental. The sanctuary and symbol of order for assassins become a casualty of the Marquis Wrath, reduced to ashes and rubble. In the midst of the chaos, Sharon, a steadfast companion, falls victim to a gunshot wound that pierces his chest. Winston, stricken with anguish and sorrow, remains by his side as life slips away. He bears the heavy burden of guilt, tormented by the belief that it should have been him instead. In the enchanting city of Paris, a serene park becomes the backdrop for a poignant moment. Kane, a skilled but visually impaired assassin, stands amidst the gentle melodies of his daughter Mia's violin. Their harmonious bond is shattered when the Marquis, a formidable figure, summons Kane with a chilling ultimatum. Friendship and loyalty clash with duty as the Marquis coerces Kane into pursuing the elusive John Wick. The threat of a grave consequence hangs over Kane's head, leaving him with no choice but to accept the haunting assignment, despite the painful history they share. In a distant land, John Wick finds himself seeking refuge at the Osaka Continental, overseen by his longtime friend Shimazu Koji, with his daughter Akira serving as the concierge. A glimmer of hope emerges as Koji extends a covert sanctuary to John, shrouded in secrecy, although Akira remains skeptical of his intentions. However, tranquility is swiftly shattered when the Marquis trusted lieutenant, Chitty, descends upon the scene accompanied by a ruthless squad of assassins. Their mission? To entice John out of hiding and into their deadly clutches. Undeterred by the imminent danger, Koji's stalwart guards rise to the occasion, engaging in a fierce clash against the formidable high-table assassins. 
In a display of unwavering determination, John steps into the fray, unleashing his extraordinary prowess and proving why he is a force to be reckoned with. Amidst the chaos, Kane emerges with a thirst for revenge, strategically setting traps and eliminating his targets with deadly precision. In the midst of the chaos, Akira bravely joins the battle but falls victim to a painful wound. John steps up, aiding Akira and Koji's escape while unleashing his exceptional skills, wielding nunchucks against multiple foes. Fate brings John and Kane face to face, former friends burdened by a complicated past. Reluctantly, Kane pursues John, but despite his efforts, he fails to capture him, their bond is shattered but unresolved. Amidst the relentless gunfire, a mysterious tracker named Mr. Nobody and his loyal German Shepherd lend a helping hand to John, eliminating some of the assailants. Though tempted by the lucrative bounty on John's head, Mr. Nobody believes that the current $20 million offered is insufficient. Regardless, he selflessly aids John while ensuring the safety of Koji and Akira, guiding them to escape. However, as fate would have it, Kane confronts Koji, setting the stage for a fierce sword duel. At first, it seems Koji might escape, but fueled by unwavering determination, he continues the fight against Kane. Tragically, Kane lands a fatal blow, leaving Akira to cradle her father's lifeless body, consumed by grief and thoughts of revenge. Heartbroken and filled with anger, Akira seeks out John at the train station, laying blame on him for her father's tragic demise. Tearfully, she implores him to avenge her father by taking down Kane, warning that if he refuses, she will hold him accountable. Meanwhile, Winston, aware of the dangers surrounding John, meet with the Bowery King, forming an alliance to protect themselves. Amidst the turmoil, the Harbinger confronts the Marquis, expressing concern over the unnecessary violence that unfolded at the Osaka Continental. However, the Marquis, driven by a desire to dismantle the myth of John Wick's invincibility, defends the ruthless measures taken. In a tense encounter, Mr. Nobody confronts the Marquis, seeking a staggering $23 million contract for eliminating John. Faced with the audacious demand, the Marquis, embodying his ruthless nature, impales Mr. Nobody's hand, presenting him with a gruesome choice. Remove the knife or sacrifice his own hand. Bravely, Mr. Nobody chooses to extract his injured hand, demonstrating his resolve. Acknowledging his determination, the Marquis begrudgingly accedes to his request, setting the stage for a dangerous alliance forged in blood. In a somber moment at Karen's tomb, John and Winston share their grief over their departed friend. Winston, fueled by determination, proposes a daring plan to seek retribution against the Marquis. He believes that John must defy the odds and challenge the Marquis to a legendary high table duel, even though such duels are often dismissed as mere myths. Winston sees this as the only path to reclaim their freedom and restore the shattered New York Continental. However, John's hope lies solely in his estranged family, as the rest of the Roma community has turned their backs on him, making the road ahead even more treacherous. As John ventures to the Ruska Roma community in Berlin, he is met with hostility as the priest greets him with a shotgun blast. Bound and with a noose around his neck, John faces the wrath of his adoptive sister, Katya. Filled with anger and grief over the execution of their father, Pyotr, Katya confronts John. However, amidst her fury, she presents him with an opportunity for redemption. She demands that he seek justice by targeting Killa, a high-table member from Germany responsible for their father's death. In this moment of strained family ties, John is faced with a chance to right his wrongs and earn back the trust he has lost. John enters Killa's bustling nightclub, where he unexpectedly finds himself joined by Kane and Mr. Nobody. As they sit down for a card game with Killa, it becomes evident that he's up to his old tricks, cheating his way to an unfair advantage. In an instant, Killa's henchmen launch an attack on the trio of skilled assassins. While Kane and Mr. Nobody skillfully fend off the thugs, John swiftly navigates through the chaos, his lethal skills on full display. Moving through the oblivious club goers, John relentlessly pursues Killa, leaving a trail of defeated foes in his wake. 
Finally, with a swift and precise throw, John slices Killa's neck using a card, initiating a brutal showdown. Despite Killa's size and strength advantage, John's superior skill and determination prevail, ultimately overpowering his formidable opponent. As the confrontation between John and Killa intensifies, Killa's men swarm around John, triggering a brutal and relentless battle. Despite the overwhelming odds, John's determination and combat prowess allow him to gain the upper hand. Eventually, he corners Killa, leading to a decisive moment where Killa plummets down a stairway, meeting his demise. John seizes one of Killa's gold teeth as evidence of his victory and presents it to Katya, who acknowledges his success. In a solemn ceremony, John undergoes the branding of the family crest, solidifying the support he has gained for the imminent duel. With determination in his eyes, Winston confidently presents the challenge document to the defiant Marquis. Initially reluctant, the Marquis realizes he cannot escape the traditions of the high table. Winston boldly asserts his terms, insisting that if John emerges victorious, he should regain his position as the continental manager and be freed from the burden of excommunicado. The weight of the impending duel hangs in the air, as the fate of John and the New York Continental rests on the outcome. In the serene setting of a Parisian sake occur, the Marquis and John come face to face, their fate hanging in the balance. The Harbinger presides over their meeting, ensuring fairness and order. As they discuss the terms of the duel, a solemn agreement is reached. At sunrise, they will engage in a high-stakes gunfight. Time is of the essence, as failure to appear will result in an immediate forfeiture and a grim fate. Cain stands by the Marquis as his loyal second, driven by the promise of freedom for himself and his daughter, Mia, if he succeeds in killing John. Stricken with grief, John seeks solace in a church, paying tribute to his beloved Helen. It is here that Cain joins him, revealing the depth of his own personal sacrifices and the high stakes for both of them. Before the decisive duel, John seeks guidance and support from his trusted allies, Winston and the Bowery King. Recognizing the impending danger, the Bowery King presents John with a new gun and a sturdy bulletproof suit, equipping him for the forthcoming battle. Meanwhile, the Harbinger reminds the Marquis of the severe repercussions that await him within the high table if he falls victim to John. Desperate to hinder John's timely arrival, the Marquis dispatches his formidable enforcer, Chitty, and his gang to hunt him down. The airwaves crackle with a radio DJ's announcement of the hefty bounty on John's head, luring even more relentless assassins into the chase. John finds himself facing a relentless onslaught of gunmen, skillfully maneuvering through the bustling streets of Paris, even navigating the chaotic traffic around the iconic Arc de Triomphe. With calculated precision, he dispatches his assailants or strategically allows them to meet their demise in the path of oncoming vehicles. Inside a sprawling warehouse, John finds himself surrounded by a horde of adversaries. With sheer determination, he unleashes a storm of explosive rounds, creating chaos in his wake. Meanwhile, Mr. Nobody lends a helping hand, skillfully eliminating some of the relentless assassins, all while negotiating with the Marquis for an increased payment that amounts to a staggering $40 million. The news of this exorbitant contract spreads like wildfire, attracting an even larger wave of desperate hitmen seeking their fortune. Through relentless perseverance, John fights his way to the steps that lead to the sacred arena of death. Each step becomes a battlefield as he encounters more formidable assassins, their determination to halt his advance unwavering. Suddenly, Chitty emerges, launching a powerful blow that sends John tumbling backward. However, in a moment of unexpected assistance, Kane arrives, joining forces with John to combat Chitty's ruthless henchmen. As the clash intensifies, Mr. Nobody himself enters the fray, confronting Chitty directly in a fierce battle. At the top of the steps, John and Kane stand side by side, their pistols in hand, ready to face the Marquis in an old-fashioned duel that will determine their fates. The stage is set, and with unwavering resolve, they prepare to engage in a final confrontation that will leave no room for mercy or compromise.
In the heart-pounding clash between John and Cain, each landing their shots with painful accuracy, the intensity reaches its peak. As the third round unfolds, it is Cain's bullet that finds its mark, piercing John's gut. Yet, defying expectations, John chooses not to retaliate, reserving his final round. The weight of his decision dawns on the Marquis too late, as John's act of mercy seals his own fate. With the Marquis poised to deliver the final blow, a timely intervention disrupts the scene. Winston, keenly observant, interjects, reminding the Marquis of John's unfinished business, the unspent round. A realization grips the air, and seizing the slipping opportunity, John acts with unwavering determination. He raises his weapon, unleashing a fatal shot that reverberates through the arena, ending the Marquis reign of terror. In a solemn moment, the Harbinger declares that both John and Cain are finally free from their obligations to the high table. John descends the steps, his mind briefly filled with thoughts of Helen, before collapsing under the weight of his journey. As his life force fades, John Wick embraces his final moments as a man unburdened by the chains of his past. Winston and the Bowery King honor John's final wishes, laying him to rest beside his beloved Helen, the tombstone stands tall, bearing the words, Loving Husband, a testament to the love they shared. The Bowery King ponders the eternal destination of John's soul, questioning whether he finds solace in heaven or confronts his demons in hell. Winston, embracing the uncertainty, responds, Who knows? With a heavy heart, they depart, leaving the Bowery King to provide a loving home for John's faithful canine companion. In this poignant conclusion, the legend of John Wick finds its well-deserved rest, leaving us to ponder the boundaries between life and death, and the enduring legacy of a man who fought with unyielding loyalty and indomitable spirit. And with that, the captivating movie reaches its grand finale, leaving us with a sense of fulfillment and awe.